Rolling Art Entertainment presents Collector's Catalog, a film service legacy for a select clientele. We offer an opportunity to create an expert visual documentary of your collection, incorporating a non-disclosure covenant. Your vehicles will be treated with the maximum respect they deserve. We use the finest digital equipment to capture every nuance of every vehicle, whether your collection comprises one or 100 vehicles. Utilize your catalog for historical, appraisal, or insurance documentation. Establish the heritage of your collection by including restoration histories. Add or remove vehicles quarterly, biannually, or annually. Record your own image or voice descriptions of your collection or use our professional announcers. Type 35 is a 2.3 liter Grand Prix Bugatti, 1927. So 35s were, the, were probably the signature Bugatti racing car. More, more Type 35 Bugattis won major races in Europe than any other Bugatti and probably more than any other automobile, any other make. Well, just on the other side of the Type 35 is the little Type 52, uh, the, uh, the battery-powered Type 52 baby Bugatti. Those were made in the Bugatti factory. So all Bugatti parts, uh, battery powered, goes between 12 and 14 miles an hour. There are very few real Type 52s left. Uh, what we found that in Argentina. It was uh, on the top of a pole uh, around a merry-go-round in a circus in Argentina. Just stuck way up high. And so we got it down, and bought it, uh, brought it here, then we restored it. At Duesenberg in the 1930s, when you purchased a car, you received a rolling chassis. You then decided who would build the body. This 1931 Duesenberg coachwork was performed by Jay Wayman. The car was originally commissioned by Walter Varney, who started the airmail service in 1926, which later became United Airlines. The car was originally prepared with this unique orange and black finish. The entire undercarriage is painted in the orange color. It has distinctive pontoon fenders with no running boards. A novel accessory on all Duesenbergs was the word stop spelled out in the taillight. The car is not a boat tail, but is designated as a taper tail speedster. There is a small, sleek canvas top which can be folded down or completely removed. The interior is executed in complementing orange leather. Another unique accessory on all Duesenbergs was the installation of an altimeter on the dashboard. It has a one-person rumble seat which also stores the spare tire. This is a non-supercharged 420 cubic inch inline eight-cylinder motor and has 265 horsepower. Despite its 5,200 pound dry weight, the car was easily capable of 120 miles an hour. This is a 1965 Mercer Cobra. The car was originally commissioned by George M. Hartley, president of the Copper Development Association. Virgil Exner, the designer responsible for the 50s tail fin, actually designed the car for an Esquire magazine ad many years before. It wasn't intended to be a working automobile. Nonetheless, Mr. Hartley saw the ad and decided this would be the perfect opportunity to influence the automotive industry by demonstrating to the public the use of copper and brass instead of stainless steel and chrome. A Cobra chassis with a high output 289 cubic inch motor was purchased from Carroll Shelby for $2,700. Virgil Exner then hired the firm of Sibona Bassano of Torino, Italy to execute the coachwork at a cost of $12,500. Mr. Exner was paid $15,000. The whole process took less than one year to complete, creating an exemplary example of automotive art. In less than six months, over five million people saw the car at exhibitions and trade shows. 
Even though the odometer reads less than 200 miles, this car has traveled North America, Africa, Asia, and all of Europe and Australia to demonstrate the elegant appearance of an automobile dressed in copper and brass. Unfortunately, the results of Mr. Hartley's business experiment can be seen with the continuing use of stainless steel and chrome. The Collector's Catalog is a very flexible concept. We have followed the lengthy construction of many specialty vehicles. From pencil on paper to rubber on road, we've looked at individualized customs. We've chronicled the development of one-off concept motorcycles. We have documented the restoration of rare vintage race cars. And of course, we have observed the restoration process of classic works of art. The Collector's Catalog is a unique opportunity to create a visual documentary of your collection. For further information, please contact Michael Ballin at 310-488-3881 in Los Angeles, California. Thank you.